freedom. Oh, freedom. A man is a man until that man finds a plan, a plan that makes him that man, a new man, Dred Scott. Dred Scott perfectly describes what had happened to him through this statement after the events that would infamously be known as the Dred Scott v. Sanford case. The year is 1857, and the tensions caused by slavery is brewing intensely. The country is slowly being divided by borders, caused by the question of, should slavery be legal, in which Missouri is in the middle of this conflict. There, Dred Scott and his family would soon fall victim to such borders being drawn. Dred Scott's freedom would soon be on the line and infamously become a part of not just St. Louis history, but also a but also America's deep history with slavery. Dred Scott is an important figure because he challenged and impacted St. Louis's history and laws, challenged the justice system, and impacted the question of slavery in America. Oh, freedom. Dred Scott was born in Virginia around 1799 to parents who were both slaves, which automatically would dictate that he too was a slave. He was owned by the Peter Blow family, who all moved to St. Louis, Missouri in 1830. However, the Peter Blow family soon sold him to Dr. John Emerson, a military doctor stationed at Jefferson Barracks. During this time, he would meet and marry Harriet Robinson at Fort Snelling. The couple soon had two beautiful daughters named Eliza and Lizzie. The family moved with Dr. Emerson to Illinois and Wisconsin. However, this new se settlement for the family would, so would soon turn into the basis of the conflict for the Dred Scott's freedom. Illinois and Wisconsin were two states that were north of the line drawn by the Missouri Compromise of 1820. Therefore, slavery was hereby illegal. Dr. John Emerson soon dies in 1843, and his wife sells the Scots to work for other families. The Scots had worked for nine years in free states as slaves, but by 1846, they had had enough. On April 6, 1846, at the age of 50, Dred Scott sued Irene Emerson. Dr. Emerson's widow, for his and his family's freedom. He sues Miss Emerson based on three main reasons. He was about to be sold again, he didn't want to be hired out, and he had previously tried to buy his freedom but was told no, even though he had lived in a free state. The case that went down would influence infamously be known as a Dred Scott v. Sanford case and would change the course of history forever. Oh, freedom. The Dred Scott case has had a huge impact on St. Louis that we can still see today. Dred Scott had lived in St. Louis for a period of time with the Emerson family, so therefore he already had roots buried in St. Louis. St. Louis even had a pretty big free black community at the time, which Scott found many supporters in. Many slaves worked on plantations outside the city, however, so slaves within St. Louis were rare, since it was less profitable. In 1846, Scott sued behalf of the St. Louis court for his freedom on the premise that he had lived in free territories and therefore should be able to buy his freedom. The court case started out as minute and insignificant, like every case for when a slave tried for freedom in the St. Louis court system. The court case took place in the old courthouse specifically, in the first floor West Wing courtroom in which it is still infamously known today. There is even a museum to remember the Dred Scott case. The case has not only impacted St. Louis culture, but also the city's court system. 
The Scots lost the first trial on hearsay evidence, but however, during the second trial, the judge decided that the Scots had the right to be free. This was a huge decision, especially in St. Louis at the time, since slavery was very much legal here, and the public would therefore have a mixed reaction to it. Irene Emerson, however, thought this decision was unconstitutional, so she appealed the case to the Missouri Supreme Court, despite the opposition of her new husband, who, ironically, was anti-slavery. The Missouri Supreme Court then repealed the decision made by the St. Louis Court. They stated by saying, Times are now not as they were when the previous decision of the subject were made. The Missouri Court would say that since slavery was allowed in the state, it would support the rights of slave owners at all cost. This had a huge impact on the future of slave rights in Missouri and St. Louis. This also helped to further fuel the divisiveness of whether slavery should be legal, not just in the state, but in the country. After the Missouri Supreme Court decision, the Scots would continue fighting and filed suit for the Supreme Court of the United States. This would challenge the justice system in this unprecedented case, which would make ripples through America. The Supreme Court had never been handed a case for freedom like this before. Therefore, the decision that the court would make would set a mark for the question of slavery in America and the role the Supreme Court had in it. On the historic day of March 6, 1857, Chief Justice Roger B. Taney would state that the Scots were slaves, so they therefore had no rights. Seven out of the nine justices agreed that Scots had no right to freedom, despite living in free territories. They also ruled that since the Scots were property and not citizens, they couldn't bring suit to any federal court in the first place. The biggest statement made was that slaves are personal property and any laws made by the Missouri, Missouri Compromise was unconstitutional and therefore the federal government had no say in whether slavery would be legal in the new territories. The court had made a precedent decision about the role of justice system in slavery. This would also be a huge factor to the question of slavery in America and sectionalism. The Dred Scott decision also made ripples through the American public and the question of slavery in America. The Dred Scott case was one of the first major cases where a slave was suing a white person that made it to the Supreme Court. Additionally, the Scots won the first suit in St. Louis Court, which was a precedent and extremely controversial during the divisive time. The Supreme Court decision stated by Justice Taney was a huge factor to the question of slavery in the states. A major effect of that was that it fueled sectionalism, since people now found this case as evidence that slavery would be divide, should be decided by popular sovereignty, since the Supreme Court now backed this idea up. He stated that slaves were not citizens and have no rights in America. This decision also divided the public. Abolitionist group feared that this would allow for sl slavery to spread rapidly, and the anti-slavery New Republican Party fought even harder to gain control of Congress. On the other hand, slave owners in the South thought of this as a big victory and that slavery was constitutional. Some even debate that the Dred Scott decision helped to further push a country to the edge of a civil war. This decision was so controversial that, even, that it was even a topic for debate for the 1858 election between Lincoln and Douglas. The Dred Scott case has had a lasting impact on America and the people. This case would also fuel the abolitionist movement during the Civil War and even beyond. Many civil rights activists would be inspired by Scott's bravery to fight for his freedom and translate that into fighting for their own freedom. Dred Scott's story is still heard today and is taught in school as an important part of history. In St. Louis, the Dred Scott Museum in the co old courthouse was made to remember Scott's heroic and brave actions, as well as to educate the public on this important event in America. The Dred Scott decision have also been used as one of the many reasons Justice Taney has been discredited today.
Many statues of him have been removed due to his actions during the Civil War, with the Dred Scott decision being one of the biggest. Even though Dred Scott lost the case, him and his family eventually gained their freedom in 1857 when his owner sold him to his original owners, who freed him. Dred Scott died one year later in 1858 of tuberculosis, but as a free man, and was buried in St. Louis. Also, after the Civil War, the 13th and 14th Amendment overturned the Dred Scott decision. Due to Scott's fight for freedom, many positive and inspiring outcomes have impacted America. In 2007, Lynette Jackson, his great-great-granddaughter, quotes, Even though it looks like it doesn't work out, it usually does. Oh, freedom. Oh, freedom. Oh, freedom. Oh, freedom.